Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. So far, five problems we have completed on sequencing. Now, this is the last video. Sixth problem is the last problem for two machines and n jobs. After this, we will have three machines and n jobs. The, those problems are little bit different problems. So hope you have already watched the first five problems, got the complete command on how to solve the sequencing problems where we have number of jobs, n number of jobs and every job is passing through two machines, two facilities are there in the order M1 to M2. So every job has to pass through first M1, then it has to do the processing on M2. Like this, we have to finish off all the n number of jobs. In what optimum sequence we have to find out so that the total elapsed time should be minimum. That is the objective. So Johnson and Bellman has given the procedure how to solve it. First compare all the processing times, whichever the processing time is less for which job. If the job is on machine M1, assign from left. If the minimum time is on machine M2, assign from right like that we have to make the assignment till we get all the optimum solutions so before starting the sixth problem i expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which i have given in the link under my description always keep it ready take the screenshot of the points which i have written then i'll explain See the sixth problem. Six jobs are to be processed on two machines. The processing time for each job on each machine is given. Find the sequence of jobs that minimizes total elapsed time to complete the jobs. Also calculate the minimum elapsed time. The jobs are to be processed first on machine M1. So two machines are there M1 and M2. Jobs are A, B, C, D, E, F. Six jobs are given. So processing times are given, for example, job A, four hours on machine M1 and six hours on machine M2. Like that, all processing times are given. So same way, how we have proceeded in the previous problem, exactly same procedure we follow. Jobs A, B, C, D, E, F, the processing times, whatever is given in the problem. First thing, you have to select the minimum processing time. Among all these, the minimum processing time is two hours for job D on machine M2, second machine. So we have to assign from right. So this job D should be assigned to the right because it is uh, on the second machine, right? If it would have been on the first machine, we would have assigned on the first side. First machine, left side. Second machine, right side. So the minimum processing time is two hours for job D on machine M2. So we assign job D to the extreme right as follows, job D. <coughs> the remaining processing times are, so excluding this D, the remaining, process, the remaining jobs are A, B, C, E, F. Now again see what is the minimum processing time. Here there is a time. 3 hours is the minimum, but 3 R is there for C job as well as B job. The C job is on M1 machine that means we have to assign from left C job and B job we are getting three hours on machine M2 that means this B job should be assigned to the right before this D so before this D we assign B and C should be assigned in the first cell because C is there on the M1 machine right so minimum processing time is three hours for job C on M1 and also for job B on M2 so we assign job C to the left cell, first cell, and also assign job B to the right before job D as follows. First cell C, then before D we have assigned B. The remaining jobs are A, E, F. Now again locate what is the minimum time among these processing times. So we find four hours. Again there is a time. There is a time. So for A job, 4 hours is minimum for machine M1. So we assign A job to the left after C. So after C, we assign A, right? 
Similarly, 4 is the minimum time for F job on machine M2. M2 means right side. Right side already BD we have taken. So before B, before B we take F. <coughs> before B we take F. So C, A, F, B, D. Only one cell is left and one job is left. That job is E. Only one job and one unoccupied cell. So this E job should be assigned to the unoccupied cell E. That's it. So we got the optimum uh, sequence. The optimum sequence is C, A, E, F, B, D. First we should start with C. After completing C then we should go for A. Then E, F, B, D. If we follow this sequence, what will happen? The total elapsed time will be minimum. If we do not follow this, if we follow any other sequence, the total elapsed time will be more, not minimum. That is the advantage of following this procedure. Now we are required to find out the total elapsed time and idle time for each machine. So as usual, the first column is job. We'll take the sequence C A E F B D C A E F B D. Whatever we got here. <clears throat> now two columns machine M1, machine M2. A sub columns are in out. When the job is started, that is in. When the job is finished, that is uh, out. Then idle time for M2, second machine. The first machine, there is no need to open the column because uh, the machine one will not stop in between. Once it is it is started, it will continue without any break till the last job completed. So in between, we don't have any idle time for machine M1. Huh? In between idle time may be there for machine M2. That's why we have opened the column. Now, always we begin with zero time. Beginning time will be zero. From zero, same job M1. So see the problem C M1, C M1, how many hours? 3 hours, 3 hours are required for C job M1 machine, so 0 plus 3 is 3, immediately after completing C job it will start A job, so 3 hours it will start, A M1, what is A M1 here, 4, 3 plus 4, 7, 7 it will start the E job, E M1, E M1 is 7, 7 plus 7, 14. 14 it will start F job. F M1. What is F M1? 5. So 14 plus 5, 19. 19 it will start. B F1. B M1. B M1 is 8. So 19 plus 8, 27. It will start at 27. D M1. What is D M1? 6. Here 27 plus 6, 33. So job started at zero time <clears throat> and all the jobs are finished at 33 hours on M1 machine. Actually M2 machine will start processing only after completing the job on M1. The first C job, it was completed at 3 hours. The third hour it will start the work. M2 machine will start the work at the third hour. The first three hours the M2 machine is idle. M2 machine is idle. Now we find out it is starting at 3 hours. So C M2. What is the time for C M2 is 7. So 3 plus 7. 10. Now you compare the out time for machine 2 and out time for machine 1. Whichever is higher we have to select. So here it is 10th hour. But here the out time is 7 hours. So at 7th hour it cannot start. Because it will finish the previous job at 10th hour. So which one is higher we have to take. So higher 10. So it will start at 10th. Right. There is no idle time for M2 machine. Because 10th hour it has completed. Immediately 10th hour it has started the next job. So A machine M2. See A M2 is 6. So 10 plus 6. 16. 16. Now compare 16 or 14. Whichever is higher. So it will start at 16th hour. So no idle time. At 16 completed, 16 started. Here there is a waiting time for the job. The waiting time for the job. But no idle time for the machine. So 16. Now EM2. Now check EM2 is 8. 8. So 16 plus 8, 24. Now 24 or 19. Whichever is higher. 
तो 24 इज हायर नो आइडल टाइम 24 24 बट हियर देयर इज अ वेटिंग टाइम फॉर द जॉब जॉब इज वेटिंग तो 24 एफ एम टू एफ एम टू इज फोर आवर्स तो 24 प्लस फोर ट्वेंटी तो ट्वेंटी और ट्वेंटी विच अवर इज हायर तो ट्वेंटी इज हायर so again there is no waiting there is no idle time for m2 but there is waiting time now b m2 uh b m2 is 3 so 28 plus 3 is 31 right now 31 or 33 whichever is higher now there is a idle time because 31th hour it has finished the job b but it cannot start the b job until and unless the job is finished on M1. So M1 job is finished at 33. So here there is an idle time from 31 hour to 33 hour. The machine is idle at 33 hour, 33 hour it is starting. So how many hours idle? Two hours from 31 to 33. Right? Now what is the uh, DM2 time? DM2 is two hours. So add up 33 plus 2, 35. That's all. so the total processing time the total elapsed time is 35 hours started the job at 0 hour and finished all the jobs at 35 hours so total elapsed time 35 hours what is the idle time on m1 machine m1 machine has finished the jobs at 33 hour whereas all the jobs are finished at 35 hours so 35 minus 33 is 2 hours So two hour is the idle time for M1 machine. Now what is the idle time for M2 machine? Check three plus two is five. Five hour is the idle time on machine M2. That's all. So this is the end of sixth problem. So first sixth problem are those problems in which we have n number of jobs but only two machines. In the next video, I'm going to start the problem where n jobs are there, but three machines M1, M2, M3. How to proceed? How to I mean find the optimum solution? I'll explain in the next video. So if you are satisfied, give a like to the video, share my channel, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. And uh, apart from this, I have uploaded so many different subjects videos. So visit the playlist of my channel. select the subject watch the video enhance your knowledge be confident on the subject inshallah we will continue the next problem in the next video